So you're solving your square one and you come across a case like this. This is called parity. Today I'm going to show you two different ways to solve parity on a square one. The first way is a longer algorithm but is easier to recognize. I'm going to show you how to swap this piece and this piece. The other way to solve it is midway through the solve. If you can recognize 3x3 three three PLL cases, I would skip to this timestamp here. But if you don't know how to recognize them, I will be showing you how to swap these two pieces. The way to solve this case is to hold it so that the two pieces that need to be swapped are on the front and the back. Then you perform this algorithm. Slash 3 3 Slash 1 0 Slash Minus 2 Minus 2 Slash 2 0 Slash 2 2 Slash Minus 1 0 Slash Minus 3 Minus 3 Slash minus two, zero, slash, three, three, slash, three, zero, slash, minus one, minus one, slash, minus three, zero, slash, one, one, slash, four, minus three. Another way to get square one parity is when these two pieces need to be swapped. I will put the algorithm on screen now. The other way which you can solve parity is a shorter algorithm, but it is harder to recognize. This is done after you have solved the yellow and the white side. The way that you know if you have parity, if the top and bottom layer are both possible PLL cases on a 3x3, then you do not have parity. If one of them is solvable and one of them is not, then you have parity. As you can see here, on the white side I have a solvable g perm, and on the yellow side I have an unsolvable case. This means that I have got parity. The algorithm that you should do here is slash three three slash one zero slash four minus two slash minus four two slash minus one zero slash minus three minus three slash. Now, if you go on to solve the square one, how you would usually solve it, you will not get parity.